Hi guys, welcome to Getmatic. In the previous lecture, we saw the different type of DC to DC converter that is buck converter, boost converter and the buck boost converter in discontinuous conduction mode. Now in this lecture, we will start another kind of converter that is the multi-phase buck converter or you can say interleaved buck converter. So let's get started. So before watching this lecture, I would like to say you that you should watch my lecture number 22 of Power Electronics in which I explain all the concept related to the buck converters. So go through this and after that watch this lecture. Okay. So I'm considering that you know the concept of buck converter. Now let us start multi-phase buck converter. See, I told you in my lecture number 22 that this switch S1 as well as this diode and this inductor these three are known as canonical switch now multi-phase means this canonical switch are connected in parallel means when two canonical switch are connected in parallel to share a common load here load is this one i am considering that the load is resistive to share a common load then those type of converter is known as multi-phase converter now here DC to DC and this circuit is known as buck converter. So two buck converter are connected in parallel known as multi-phase buck converter or you can say interleaved buck converter. Got it? So the question arises why these two are connected in parallel or why parallel operation is done. Okay. So I told you in order to share the load like if I will talk about the transformer then why parallel operation of transformer is done? The parallel operation of transformer is done in order to share a common load. So let us suppose I am connecting a load whose value whose resistance is let us say 10 ohm okay and current here flowing is that is 50 ampere. I am assuming that it may be anything. I am assuming that the load current flowing that is the 50 ampere and I am taking only one buck converter means I am ignoring this canonical switch means this canonical switch are not connected only one buck converter is there. So this 50 ampere current will flow across this inductor current, right? So inductor current will be 50 ampere, fine. Now see what is the value of switch current? Switch current will depend upon the duty cycle. So duty cycle, the value of duty cycle will be in between 0 to 1. So I can say switch current, let us say I am considering that this is 40 ampere. So to transfer the 40 ampere of current across this switch S1, we need this converter. Now if I will increase the load means if I will load, uh, reduce the resistance then this load will increase and let us say this current now becomes 100 ampere and this switch has a rating of to sustain 50 ampere of current now this 100 ampere will flow this through this inductor because only one inductor is present fine and based on the duty cycle if current will be greater than the 50 ampere let us say 70 ampere current should flow but the rating of this switch is 50 ampere only so we cannot connect the load whose value is greater than the rated load of this buck converter every switch is having some maximum current capacity every inductor is having maximum current capacity so we cannot go beyond that so what are the alternative option the alternative option is in order to share a huge amount of load or in order to increase the power transfer capacity what I will do I will connect two buck converter in parallel so what will happen let us suppose here 100 ampere current is flowing that is the average load current now we know in capacitor the average capacitor current is zero so no current will flow across capacitor at a steady state here also 100 ampere current will flow now this inductor and this inductor will share a common load having 100 ampere of current so I am assuming that both inductor is having same value and both switch rating are having same value means here 50 ampere of current will flow and here 50 ampere of current will flow apply KCL here it will divide the current equally right so because of that the switch current may be 40 ampere which is less than the rating of the switch so what I did in order to transfer the huge amount of power or in order to connect a heavy load we connect two buck converter in parallel to share a common load so first advantage is load sharing like we already studied in transformer why parallel operation of transformer is done to share a common load second advantage is see if i will talk about only one buck converter then this current will be having 100 ampere of current means here inductor value will be much much larger than the previous case 
right so in order to reduce the size of inductor what i will do i will connect two buck converter in parallel so that this fifth this inductor will uh, sustain 50 ampere of current and this inductor will sustain 50 ampere of current so two a small inductor is required to share a load of 100 ampere so this is a small this is a small so overall if i will design the multi-phase buck converter means overall size of converter will reduce okay if i will connect only one inductor having large number of turns which can sustain 100 ampere of current then this will be bulky than to a small inductor got it so size of converter also decreases in multi-phase buck converter so these all are the advantage if i will connect two buck converter in parallel to share a huge amount of load now let us understand how this operate okay so here two switches connected one switch is is1 having current is1 and second switch is having is2 and if i am connecting both the switches at say at same rating both inductor of same value and both diode also same rating now let us say here il1 current will flow and this il1 will be the average inductor current and here il2 inductor current will flow now see i have drawn the waveform of this switch s1 and s2 this s1 is closed for this duration from 0 to dt and this s2 is closed from dt to t means both switch are working in complementary fashion complementary fashion means if one switch is closed means other is open if uh, other is closed then one will be open got it now draw the inductor current waveforms so i am assuming that it is working in continuous conduction mode now what i am doing i am closing the switch at t is equal to zero this switch at t is equal to zero this is the on time of switch s1 and this is the off time of switch s1 similarly this is the on time of switch s2 and this is the off time of switch s2 so both switch are connected in complementary fashion if one is on then other must be off now see when this switch s1 will closed may switch s1 is closed from 0 to dt fine so from 0 to dt this inductor will charge right first inductor let us say this is l1 and this is l2 so l1 is equal to l2 i am assuming so this inductor l1 will charge so let us consider this is my minimum inductor current and this is my maximum inductor current so at a steady state i will get something like this this inductor will charge from 0 to dt and when this switch s1 will open then this this inductor will discharge from load and this diode all the concept has been discussed in lecture number 22 so if i am taking only one buck converter and i am drawing the waveform of inductor current so from 0 to dt inductor will charge and when switch will get closed means supply is removed this inductor will discharge through load and free willing means the, the inductor current will be something like this go through the lecture number 22 first you will understand in this way the waveform of inductor current of l1 i can make so il average will be somehow here this will be my il average il1 average will be in between il max and il minimum this will be my il max this will be my il minimum fine now see how to draw the inductor current il2 so during on condition again this inductor let us say this is having some minimum value and this is having some maximum value this inductor current so this inductor current will lie in between these two only so when switch s2 will cl close means this inductor will charge l2 inductor will charge and the inductor current will increase linearly similarly when this switch is closed then inductor current will decrease like this so here switch is closed means inductor current will decrease like this at a steady stage so i draw the two waveform of il1 as well as il2 this is my il max this is my il minimum and this will be my il2 average are you getting this all this concept i have discussed in lecture number 22 now see i want to draw the load current this is my i naught load current in earlier case means in lecture number 22 we saw that only one buck converter is connected then in that case load current average load current will be equal to the average inductor current in that case that is the lecture number 22 now here two buck converter are connected means this load current will not be equal to only one inductor current see apply kcl here you will get i not average 
will be equal to IL1 average plus IL2 average because average current across capacitor will be zero. So apply KCL here, you will get this one. So from here, you can easily conclude if I will add these two, then the overall load current will increase means overall the average load current, let us say this is my average load current. I can say this is my I0 average and this will be equal to IL1 average plus IL2 average. So overall, I can say the load current will increase means we have increased the load sharing capacity, right? Add these two waveform. This is my I0 maximum and this is my I0 minimum. So overall, we have increased the load sharing capacity just by connecting two buck converter in parallel. So this much amount of concept you have to know here i can connect three canonical switch also suppose i want to increase more load then what i will do i will connect here one more canonical switch like this okay and this will be this will also known as multi-phase buck converter only this will be my l3 to share a common load here load is connected suppose load current is 150 ampere then 50 ampere will go through l1 50 ampere will go through l2 and 50 ampere will go through L3 got it. So overall I can say the load current I have increased and we have reduced the value of individual inductor current. Now if I will talk about the average voltage now tell me one thing in order to find the average voltage in parallel operation of transformer or any other parallel operation of synchronous machine or any parallel operation we do is there load voltage changes is there output voltage changes no output voltage will not change why see if i will connect two transformer in parallel then overall the load voltage will remain same the current capacity will increase in the same way in buck converter also the average output voltage will remain same let us understand how let us see the first buck converter you can take any one first or second any one let us see this first buck converter and find the average output voltage so when switch is closed then voltage across inductor will be equal to supply voltage minus output voltage that is Vs minus V0 and when switch will be open then voltage across inductor VL off will be equal to minus V0. Now apply volt second balance that we have already discussed that is VL on into T on plus VL off into T off will be equal to 0 then you will get V0 that is equal to dVs only. So average output voltage will not change only I can say the load current will change because we are increasing the load fine in other word I can also make you understand like this buck converter one let us say this buck converter one and this is my buck converter two okay so this buck converter one is producing the load voltage let us say v1 and this buck converter two is producing a load voltage of v2 now I am saying that these two buck converter are connected in parallel is of having same rating means inductor are connected that is having same value. So output voltage also having same value. So let us say this is V0 and this is also V0. Now two buck converter is producing same voltage. Okay that is the output voltage. Now I can say the load voltage or output voltage increases. Can I say that? No I cannot say because we know according to network point of view if two ideal voltage source are connected in parallel then overall the resultant voltage will be equal to the value of individual voltage only means I can replace this two ideal voltage source with one voltage V0 only. This will be my equivalent circuit. Fine. So in, pa in parallel operation the voltage will not get changed however the current will share equally because we are connecting the two buck converter having same value of inductor as well as switch. So finally conclusion is that why parallel operation is done the parallel operation of buck converter is done to share a load second size also reduces. So these two conclusion you need to keep in mind and third average output voltage will remain same like in buck converter and we are assuming the continuous conduction mode in in this whole operation got it now if the question will be asked from the multi-phase buck converter or interleaved buck converter then how to approach that question that we are going to see by taking one example that has been asked in gate 2018 for two marks so first time multi-phase buck converter is asked in gate exam that's why i thought to make a lecture on multi-phase buck converter now see this question this has been asked in gate 2018 for two marks 
the figure shows two buck converter connected in parallel fine the common input dc voltage for the converter has a value of 100 volt this is having a value of 100 volt the converter has inductors of identical value this inductor is having a same value means both inductor will share equal load got it the load resistance is 1 ohm this load resistance is 1 ohm fine the capacitor voltage has a negligible, negligible ripple that means output voltage is constant fine both converter operate in continuous conduction mode that i have already discussed the switching frequency is 1 kilohertz fine and the switch control signal are shown see when s1 is closed then s2 is open and when s2 is closed then s1 is open means both switch are connected in complementary fashion the circuit operate in the steady state fine assuming that the converter share the load equally that is already given that both converter are sharing equal load the average value of is1 means i have to find the switch current so how to approach these kind of converter you don't have to worry first find the output voltage i am omitting this control signal because it is not required i know that both switch are operating in complementary fashion so first i will connect i will find the overall output voltage so output voltage i know that is equal to dvs okay and here according to question switch control are complementary in nature like this when switch s1 is on then s2 is closed when switch s2 is on then s1 is closed this will be my s1 this will be my s2 and on time and off time are equal according to the question i omit that question you can see previously that this on time and off time both are equal so duty cycle will be equal to 0.5 only so v0 is equal to dvs that is equal to 0.5 multiplied by 100 that is equal to 50 volt so i got output voltage that is equal to 50 volt same as the buck converter that we have seen in lecture number 22 now resistance is 1 ohm that means the load current will be having 50 ampere right now i know the average capacitor current will be zero that we have already discussed in the lecture number 22 so this 50 ampere of current will be shared equally along this both inductor apply kcl here so this inductor current i will get that is of 25 ampere and this inductor current i will get that is of 25 ampere fine now once we got the inductor current then i can find the switch current we know switch current will be equal to inductor current average inductor current multiplied by duty cycle from where we got this formula this formula i got from the lecture number 22 go through that that's why i told you that go through first uh, lecture number 22 watch each and every point then come to this lecture that is equal to 25 multiplied by 0 0.5 that is equal to 12.5 so gate committee has given the answer 12.5 this is the method one to approach this question now i would like to explain you by different method that is the second method how you can approach see here we know in any power electronic converter input power and output power are equal right so we can make input power must be equal to output power we know output power is equal to v0 into i0 v0 is 50 multiplied by i0 is 50 and input power is supply voltage vs into is so i can find the supply voltage supply current that is i supply will be equal to 50 multiplied by 50 divided by 100 that is equal to 25 ampere this is my supply current right and this is equal to 25 ampere now this supply current apply kcl here this supply current will divide equally along this switch if i am taking the both canonical switch of same rated means this current will divide equally so is1 i will get that is equal to 12.5 ampere only so you can go through this method also you will get the same answer that is is1 will be equal to 12.5 ampere now i would like to explore more let us see what is happening suppose the in the question it is asked find the diode current okay how will you find we know diode current is equal to inductor current il average multiplied by 1 minus d from where we got this from lecture number 22 go through that so average diode current i i can easily find 25 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.5 that is equal to 12.5 only here duty cycle is 0 0.5 that's why i am getting switch current and diode current same now suppose the question is asked find the rms value of diode current same i can find il average under root 
1 minus d these all formula i derived in lecture number 22 so you can find 25 multiplied by under root 0 0.5 whatever you will get that is the answer so each and every formula of buck converter that we have seen in lecture number 22 will remain same only the current rating will increase means both inductor will share a common load and if load current is 50 ampere means inductor current will be 25 25 if load current will be 100 ampere then inductor current will be equal to 50 and 50 so once you got the inductor current then you can proceed like normal buck converter each and every formula of that buck converter will remain same you can find the switch current you can find the diode current so in this way you can proceed if the question is asked from multi-phase buck converter maybe they will frame a question in gate 19 or in gate 20 or in gate 2021 to find the rms value also suppose they will find they will say you to find this rms value of switch current so whatever the formula i derived in lecture number 22 that is valid to find the rms value of switch current see rms value of switch current we have already find is rms will be equal to under root d times of il average go through that lecture these all rms value of switch current average value of switch current rms value of diode current average value of diode current each and every formula will be valid in this converter only you need to find the individual inductor current once you got the individual indi inductor current then you can proceed from right to left to find each and every parameter related to buck converter now you will ask me from where i got the information and detail analysis of these multi-phase buck converter because in most of the book they have not given the multi-phase buck converter i got one research pdf that is given by texas instrument and based on that i made this lecture so i will put the link of this pdf in the description below you should go through each and every parameter if you want to understand in detail okay they have explained the detailed designing part also so you can go through that however from gate point of view this is not necessary that's all about this lecture in the next lecture we will start introduction to inverter